I think the most important thing to understand is is that we're all carbon-based life forms and we retain H2O. If we didn't have it, if we didn't have the plants around us generating water, we would not be here. And it's the oxygen they make, the hydrogen's been stored here in an atmosphere and uh, it is part of all of us, part of every plant, part of every animal, every microbe, part of everything. It's life. Water is life. We've got a little hothouse here that was made, and it's made really easily of reclaimed materials. It does have some brick walls in there. There's a roof on here that's got a gutter on the side. There's a tank that's storing some water, and I'm using fresh water here. So it's such a small area. This tank can hold enough water that uh, just waters this, all these uh, bits and pieces that are growing in here. These plants have all been turned into perennials. And if you see the shelving behind me, there's, uh, that's where all the seeds are raised. So nice and easy, and it's nice and warm in here. 25, 30 degrees all the time. I think that anyone could actually make uh, use of the water just by having a storage tank in um, and using a, a simple pipe and just working with gravity. So if you can transport it to a spot that has simply has a, uh, a trickle feed or a, a feed that is run by gravity that just allows a drip system. Um, it just works really well. There's no reason why you can't just use a watering can uh, and have your tank up a little bit higher. Uh, there's also no reason why you can't go the whole hog and do it. Nine thousand litres of unchlorinated, unfluorinated, fresh God's gift to man. <laughs> God's gift to nature, really. You need to start with a design. It's all about harvesting water. So we've got natural downpipes feeding a tank that we're standing on. The overflow from this goes into this pond down here. So you can see the top of the pond over here. So that does have fish in it and that does have plants in it. That pond does a similar idea, having something, a water source in your yard. So when we get really get a big heavy deluge, it fills up most of this yard, but because the trees have the ability to sink the water into the ground and it's spread over a wide area, it disappears. So slowly though, so the object is to slowly do it. Conservatively, it would take, I think these tanks underneath us are a bit over a thousand dollars. The framework around it, well, it's a beautiful pergola anyway. And we've got this decking that we've got here. To build the pond, I'm not really sure how much they cost, but to get the pond liners, you can get those at Bunnings. They're quite, you need to have a good pond liner. What we've always done is we've dug irrigation pipes and we've got stormwater drains and we flush the water straight down into the system. If we can slow it down and keep it on our properties, we're keeping good, clean water easily here. So what it does is make it's less watering over time. You've got plants growing all the time. And if you do look around, you can see lots of plants here, lots of variation. There's bees hovering everywhere. There's things that are flowering every time of the year. So everything needs to be fed and to feed things properly, fresh water is all part of it. If you look at Geelong's water supply, it's fairly vulnerable. Um, the Otways, you know, it's a, it's a great catchment area for water, but the population of Geelong is growing enormously, and there's so much water that is just wasted, and I, I just hate wasting things. You know, you've got this lovely water coming off your roof, 
It's perfect for use in the house, so why let it run down to the bay? Um, you know, you, you can use all this water. When I decided to start storing water, um, one of the first things I did was put in this underground tank. I did this in about 2003. Um, it holds about 4,000 litres. Uh, and it's all, um, it's got a submersible pump in there and the submersible pump can pump into this tank here. And uh, I'll show you what happens when we have plenty of water, as we have now. It's about six feet deep, but you can see at the moment, this is the um, an elbow in a 100 mil pipe that actually runs out into the gutter. So the, any overflow at the moment goes straight out into the gutter. But if I wanted to, in drought conditions, I could turn that elbow down and after sweeping the gutter and making it all nice and clean, if we've got a heavy rain, um, I could put a sandbag across the gutter and the water would actually run in here. Now, obviously you wouldn't use that for water in the house, which is what I can do is use this just for the garden, which is great because, you know, 4,000 litres of extra water for the garden that last you a little while. And uh, then these tanks, uh, two, I've got two four and a half thousand litre tanks. And the combined storage is around about 13,000 litres. The grey water comes underground here and there's a line that runs down under the hives. Uh, and there's uh, branches that come off to feed each fruit tree uh, with a slotted corrugated plastic pipe which runs round the tree and distributes the grey water to, to each tree. And you know, don't have to water them much at all in the summer. Um, the grey water does it all. I reorganised all the plumbing so that all the, the shower, the laundry, uh, the, um, yeah, the, the bathroom waste, you know, shower and bath, that all goes down into this grey water pit. Uh, it holds about 60 litres and it's, um, it has a little submersible pump in it which comes on automatically when the water level rises to a certain point. And that water then gets pumped out to either the front yard or the backyard. And I'll lift the deck, part of the deck here and actually show you what we have. There, there's no toilet waste here, it's only bathroom and laundry and stuff like that. So all I do is I push in the valve, that blocks off this, stops it going down there to the sewer, and now it runs along here and through this screen, because that sorts out the, um, any hair or lint from your laundry, uh, and it goes into this tank. Uh, it's, uh, I made this tank just by digging a hole, a nice sort of rectangular hole, pretty, you know, try and get it as even shaped as possible and then put chicken wire around the outside, a couple of layers of chicken wire, spaced a little bit out from the edge. And then uh, very carefully, you start you, uh, just mixing up uh, mortar in a barrow with a little bit of fine aggregate, you know, about six or seven mil gravel. Um, and then you, from the base, you've poured the base and sort of troweled that in. And then you just work it up the sides with a trowel, uh, like the brickies use, you know, the bricklayers use a trowel for sticking the, mortar on the bricks um, so this it's a pretty rough job but you know it holds water and it's very easy and cheap to do I mean chicken wire from the recycle place or you know got friends with chooks they got a bit of stuff left over and just a wheelbarrow with a you know bag of cement and sand and gravel and it's perfectly waterproof and it holds about 60 litres uh, there's a submersible pump in there and it pumps either to the front yard out that way, under, all underground, or the backyard down this way. And it saves me heaps of water on the garden. In, um, in the summer, if we have rainwater in the tanks, our use of bar, Barwon water is down to about 20 litres a day for the two of us. Um, and you know, when you, when you look at, uh, who it was John Brumby in the drought, asking Melbourne people to get down to 150 litres per person per day, um, this, this is pretty damn good at 20, you know, for the two of us, 20 litres a day. That's if we've got rainwater. 
and you need plenty of storage of rainwater. Uh, you cannot go overboard with water storage. When you turn on your hot water tap, if your tank, if your hot water tank is quite a long way from the tap, you're probably going to draw through about four or five litres of water before you get any hot water. So what I've done is I've got a, um, it's a circulator pump and a, a timer button. I go and push the button and what happens is the pump turns on and it draws the, the water in the hot water line from the tank, but that's cold water now and it draws that through and returns it to the cold water inlet of your hot water heater. So that when, that, um, when that's pumped it through, I can turn this on uh, as soon as it's finished and I get hot water straight away without wasting that four or five litres of cold water. There we go. We turn on and we've got hot water, lovely. With the bucket that I have in the shower, I generally turn the hot water on it is winter so I'm not going to hop in until it's warm so what I do is I turn the, the hot water on it goes straight into the bucket so we're not wasting any and then I jump in the shower once it's a good temperature so you know you've got a bit of water water in your bucket then and it can be used down the toilet or if it's dry we can put it in the garden. I've got the pipe work arranged so it can pump off either one of these tanks and there's a very simple um, tea piece arrangement where I've got the tank water on one side of the tea and the Barwon water on the other side of the tea with taps. And those valves can either select um, Barwon water for running the whole house and the garden or tank water for running the whole house and garden. Um, and I can very easily switch those over. Uh, our roof area is around about 300 square metres and that means for every millimetre of rain we have, um, we get about 300 litres. Unfortunately, um, with a tiled roof, if it's, if it's been dry for a long time, you can, the tiles will suck up one or two millimetres before you get any runoff. But um, it means, let's say if we get 10 millimetres of rain um, and the tiles are already sort of saturated, uh, well, I've got 3,000 litres of water. Um, 300 by 10, that's 3,000 litres. You know, it's well over halfway up one of these tanks. And we've, well, you know, we've had a lot of rain in the last May, you know. So the, there's actually been overflow going out into the, um, the gutter. But look, I would just love to have more storage because that would mean, uh, you know, if I had like even 30,000 litres of storage, I could be watering my garden for a lot longer than I do because you know, if we get two or three months with very little rain as we had at the beginning of this year, uh, I go through masses of Bowen water just keeping this garden um, uh, you know, moist. Um, yeah, the tanks were about $1,000 each. Uh, you, you know, you, it's, it's going to cost you a bit of, bit of money. Um, and hooking up the pump, you know, you've got an electrician for the wiring. Um, fortunately, I've got a son-in-law who's a plumber. He he helps me a lot with that work. Uh, but it's it's very easy to do. Geelong's rainfall, if you look over the hundred-year records, it's around about 550 millimetres per year. It's much drier than the eastern suburbs of Melbourne. In 2007, I think it was Geelong's rainfall was only a little over 300 millimetres. Now that's about the same as the little desert in Western Victoria. That is desperately dry. So any, any, any measure of saving water is, is you know, beneficial for the environment. And the other thing is, I like to be independent. I mean, let's think what might happen if for some reason the water supply was to fail. If there's a cyber attack on the Barwon water system and they can't fix it for a few days or even a couple of weeks, what would we do? I mean, you need water 
many, many times a day for everything. So it's partly um, to have that little bit of security, independence. And it's very satisfying. <laughs>